So there are three types of common denominator problems uh, that involve other functions, just like in the trig section. Um, the first one is where the denominators are nowhere near each other. Uh, so if I look at these two, this one has a lawn but no e, this one has an e but no lawn. In order to work this out, I'm going to have to introduce a factor of e to the 2x, both the numerator and the denominator, in that term. And I'm going to have to introduce a factor of ln x into the numerator and denominator of this term. Now, if I do that, e to the x times e to the 2x is e to the 3x, and this number 2 is just kicking around, plus 5 of these, all over the shared denominator of e to the 2x ln x. So I was able to take these two fractions with, with truly heinous bases or uh, denominators and write them as a single fraction with a common denominator. Um, now this is a bit of an obscure algebra trick, um, but it is going to come in extremely handy once you get into the calculus class and you're trying to simplify derivatives. Uh, what's a derivative? Don't worry, you'll find out in the next course. Um, and since this is the last section of the independent study, I feel like it's a good time to mention that the calculus course is coming up and that this whole advanced function thing has been prepping you for that particular class. So a second type of common denominator problem is where one thing has a denominator and the other isn't even a fraction. But that doesn't stop you, the same as it didn't stop you with the trig function. If I want to combine these two things as a single fraction, all I have to do is introduce a denominator to this second piece. And I can get away with that as long as I introduce a similar power in the numerator as well. So what I'd end up with this one, I'd end up with 3 subtract 2. And a root x times a root x is a root x squared. all over the common denominator. But of course, root x squared is just x. And where one like this comes in handy is if I had a function that was equal to 0. I've managed to create something that can be separated into cases because I can write this as the denominator piece multiplied by the numerator piece. So my two cases would be 1 over root x equals 0 and 3 minus 2x. If you have any students that plan on coming in tomorrow on the conflict day, can you please call and let us know so that we can call the bus company? know that they have students to pick up. Thank you. You can't get a zero by dividing, so this case is empty. We have an error here. And this one's reasonably easy to solve. Uh, negative 2x equals negative 3, so x would be 3 halves. All right, so one more example, and you're off to the practice problems. So the final type of common denominator problem is where you have a match already, they just have the wrong power on them. So if you look at this one, they're both x minus 3 in the denominator, but this one has two powers worth of it. So to get them to match, I need to introduce a second power in the denominator and a new one in the numerator to balance it. So this thing, this expression, would look like 5 times x minus 3 subtract 4x over x minus 3 squared. If I do some expanding, 5x, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, subtract 4x over x minus 3 squared. 5x minus 4x would be 1x minus 15 over x minus 3 squared. And this is another example of where if this thing had been equal to 0, I would be able to split this into my two cases, right? The one is the rational part, and the other is the linear part. 
So when I set this up as two cases, 1 over x minus 3 squared equaling 0 is attempting to get 0 by division, which doesn't work. So this one is an error right off the gate. You don't even have to try. This one, x minus 15 equaling 0, is reasonably trivial. x is 15. So if you can master this skill of common denominator for, for messy functions, um, especially in the case where it is equal to zero and you are using case method, you're able to divorce one whole chunk of that function out in front into a case that fails and then leaves only this interesting part here, which generates your single solution. So I hope you enjoyed the advanced functions independent study. Uh, get to the problems, I guess, and uh, on to calculus.